Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here and I am back on some Neo 2 and today I want to show you guys my Luck Warrior build. Now what's really cool about this build is that first of all, it is extremely universal. You can use whatever weapon you want on it. It's completely up to you. I am using Odachi, which I like a lot, but like I said, you could use whatever you want. And then the other purpose of this build is to help you farm. Once you get to the end game, if you want a setup that's going to do good damage and it's a really good consistent build, but also this build is going to allow you to farm for smithing techs, boss skills, or just extra divine drops, this is the build for you. It is really, really awesome. Now, I did use this build to help me actually farm, and I was able to actually get 100% of the smithing techs. Now that takes a lot of time and dedication, but this build did help me get there a lot sooner than I would if I wasn't using this build. Because for the longest time I was using different builds, I've been showing them. And I have been going for a lot of luck, trying to get drops. Once I switched to this build, I was getting those drops a lot faster, and it was way more consistent. So I definitely recommend this. And on top of it, like I said, this is a good build. It's going to do good damage across the board. And it's universal, so you can use whatever weapon you want. Now, I will also actually link to you guys a guide to help you figure out which smithing text you're missing or where to find certain smithing text, because I'm going to talk a lot about that as well in this video. So, let's go ahead and now show this build off. But I do want to say, if this video is somewhat long, because I do like to go into great details, I will be putting timestamps in the description and in the comments. So, if you want to skip around, Skip around, just use the timestamps to do so. Or you can always watch some of the video, come back later, and then use those timestamps to help you figure out where you were or what you might want to know about. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and now show this off. Let me go and buff up, and then we're going to dominate this level. This is the level that everyone farms for Amarita. It's a good level, honestly, because there's two bosses in here, and you could just dominate them. Now, I always use my Luckbringer Talisman in my menu like that. So, let me go ahead and just take this guy out real quick. And now, my favorite move with Odachi is Moonlight Snow. I really like this move a lot. It does a really great amount of damage. And it also gives me an attack buff too, which is really cool. So, I am using Sloth and Weakness. This is actually optional. It's up to you if you want to use them or not. But, I mean, check this out. One more hit and he's dead. That is crazy. So I was almost able to kill him in one Moonlight Snow. And I can't apply Confusion with this build. Normally the enemy won't even survive, even bosses. But it's something I can do. Yeah, look at that. That time, because I was hitting him in the back, I was able to kill him in one Moonlight Snow. So this build is awesome. It's universal. You can use whatever weapon you want on it. But the main purpose is to actually help you farm. If you want extra Divine Drops, if you want the smithing text, and if you want the boss skills, because I think everybody wants to actually farm for the boss skills, and this build will really help you farm for all of that a lot easier. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go back to the main menu, and then I will go over everything you need to know if you want to make this build. Alrighty, now the first thing I want to talk about is how I got 100% of the smithing tax, if you're interested, because some people are going to want to do that. And let me tell you, the real struggle is actually figuring out what you're missing. Because once you hit like 80% or 85%, you're going to really start to struggle in terms of figuring out, well, wait a minute, what am I missing? I just don't know anymore. And I actually found a guide that was really, really good at being organized because I was using the wiki for the longest time and let me tell you the wiki is good but it's really disorganized and confusing so I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to check it out it's a reddit post and then you have to click on the google document but that is a guide on every smithing text and it's organized so that's really cool and the way that the guy actually organized it was pretty much in order that you see it in your forge. So it starts with weapons, and it starts with swords, and then it goes to dual swords, and then it goes to spears. And then with the armor, it's light armor first, medium armor. It's really organized. But the coolest thing is that if you're looking at all the swords and you think maybe you're missing some swords, what you can do is he actually has it listed in terms of 
the way it pops up. So the first thing on the list is the wooden sword. And then if you scroll down some, the next one would probably be this sword because this is a smithing text. And then, you know, you go down a little bit more. The next one would maybe be this one. And then a little bit afterwards is this one. So as you're scrolling down the list, if you skip one, then you know, okay, wait a minute, I'm missing this sword. And then you find that, and then you will actually go and get it. Now, this sword, you would never be missing because this is a reward for a mission. But still, that's kind of how you can use the guide to help you figure out what you are missing. Now, there was only one smithing text on that list that I didn't see. Now, maybe I'm mistaken, and if anything, I think this was just a little tiny mistake, but I didn't see the guy actually list this particular dual sword. Now, one thing about dual swords is that there's several of them that are actually going to have, like, really strange names, and it can be confusing because when you pick up the text, it's going to pop up the Japanese name, and then when you go to your forge, it's going to pop up the English name. And this is one of those swords, by the way. So maybe that's where I got confused. But if you want to get this sword, and if you want to get this guy's armor, because this is a set bonus one, you get this from the final boss. So I wanted to point that out, because as I was looking through that list, I didn't see this listed on that guide. Which, this was the only thing on the entire guide that I did not actually see listed. So that is really, really cool. So if you want to actually use that guide to help you actually figure out exactly what you're missing, or if you just want to use it to just really tell you where everything is, it is really good at that. So 100%, I recommend using that to help you get as many smithing texts as you want to get. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and talk about the build. I'm actually going to start with the equipment because I really want to talk about the luck and the item discovery of the build itself. Now the main set bonus we're using here is actually the Child of the Sun's set bonus because it's all about luck and it's going to benefit us dramatically because we're going to have a lot of luck on this build. But when it comes to everything else, like the only other thing we're using is actually the Kadama Bowl. Now what's really nice about this is that not only is this good for farming because it's going to give you that enhanced Kadama Blessing, and if you don't know, if you're farming for smithing tax or boss skill drops, you want to switch your Kadamo Blessing to be the one that gives you 25% for material farming. That will increase your chance of getting smithing tax and also boss skill drops. So the Kadamo Bowl just makes sense because of that. But this thing is actually really light, and this armor is really heavy. It's like the heaviest in the entire game. So because of that, having a light helmet is nice. Because with 99 stamina and I believe maybe 18 strength, you're able to pull this off and not be overweight. You will be in the green B agility range if you do that. So that's really cool. The weapon, the weapon's up to you. It can be a corrupted weapon. It could be a purity weapon. It doesn't really matter. It can have a set bonus. It doesn't have to have a set bonus. This one I have on gives me 25 magic power. Not a big deal really, but... I'm just using it for that reason. So that's one of the cool things. Like I said, use whatever weapon you want on this. The dual swords, this is a part of the Child of the Sun's armor, and I'm not using them. I would say, though, if you want to use dual swords with this build, these are some pretty good dual swords. So that is something. Now, one thing you're going to notice, let me actually go to my accessories, because obviously I'm using the Yazakani Magatama, and I've actually showed this before. I still have the life recovery and Marita absorption. It's really, really good if you're using extraction talisman. 100% recommend that on both accessories if you can get it. I also like the defense bonus magic. I like having a lot of magic power, a lot of bonus magic power, because it just helps with durations. It's not the craziest thing in the world, but it does actually affect durations. I had to actually break this down to somebody in the comments of one of my videos. Because I actually went and did some testing just to kind of give them some numbers. But the most important thing is luck. You want to have luck on these for sure. You could get item drop rate on these and replace something else. I would say maybe the defense bonus or the magic power if you don't care about that. But you could get item drop rate as well if you want to put that on your accessories. Now on every single piece of armor, you want to have attack and you also want to have luck. And you also want to have item drop rate. 
Everything else is optional. I have magic power on every piece as well, but you don't have to do that. Now, if you actually look, I'm going to quickly show you. I'm going to have magic power, attack, item drop rate, and luck on every single one of these pieces, and attack, because that's also important. And on the chest piece, 100%, get that life recovery and Marita absorption, because once again, if you're using extraction talisman, it really is awesome. Now, if you want to know, like, how do you get luck and attack and all that type of stuff, how do you get that on your armor? Well, farm revenants, because a lot of revenants now are dropping orange inheritable attack and orange inheritable luck from the helmet. The attack comes from gauntlets. And then just go ahead and inherit it on every piece. The helmet will come with luck. And then every other piece, you can just go ahead and put that on there with an orange inheritable. Now, one thing you might also notice is I have Moonlight Snow Damage on this. I did that because I really love the move. And also, I wanted to show it off on how powerful it can be. Because it is really powerful, as you could see in the beginning. But I did mess up with this. Because initially... I didn't actually have the white inheritable on some of my armor. So if you look at this, yeah, I upgraded this to plus eight, and then I messed up because then I realized, oh no, I can't put Moonlight Snow on it. So I actually had to upgrade another one. Same with the boots. I actually have another pair of boots where I did the same thing, and because I did that, I couldn't actually put the Moonlight Snow damage on here. But I will say that this is what I would recommend if you're not going to put some type of skill damage onto your build. I would recommend life, attack, luck, item drop rate. I like the magic power, but it's up to you. That's what I would recommend for like other weapon builds or if you just don't care about having some type of skill damage on every single one of your pieces. Now, let's actually talk about this set bonus because there's a lot to get to with this. It's going to give you life. That's nice. Equipment drop rate. I wish it was item drop rate because item drop rate is a really important stat for getting the smithing tax and also the boss skill drops. But you will get increased luck and Marita absorption. So that's really cool. I don't know the value. The thing is, is that if you're using Luckbringer Talisman and if you're using this, you will not actually see your luck go up. But it is going up, and I know that for a fact, because of the damage bonus luck A+. That is actually really good. The thing is, is that I was doing some testing where I was testing, like, damage bonus stamina A, because I do have obsidian armor, and I was using that to kind of see how hard can I hit with this build if I'm using obsidian armor with 99 stamina and damage bonus stamina A. And I was testing it in the dojo. And then I swapped it over to this, and I tested it again, and I was hitting with this armor for like 100 more damage than I was with the Obsidian. Now, is it crazy? No, it's not crazy, but it is actually really good. That's actually nice. So this is a really good general weapon build setup. And on top of it, like I said, we're just farming, and because we have that damage bonus, Luck A+, we're actually doing some good damage too, so that's really cool. And then the other thing about this armor is that you will get a luck bonus for your Amarita gauge. But I will say that one of the things that we can do with this build, which I highly recommend, is using our Yokai Shift when we are farming for the smithing techs, primarily, are the boss skill drops. Because if you pop your Yokai Shift and then you have a bunch of soul cores on there, that's going to give you luck and it's going to give you item drop rate. That is something that is actually going to really help you get those techs a lot quicker. So in a way, I feel like that particular thing, that luck bonus and Marita gauge, I feel like that's really not as good because I guess whenever you pop your yokai shift and you're using it, I'm assuming you're losing that bonus. Now, let me actually just quickly show you the rifle. Main thing I recommend here is item drop rate. Really important, you can stack that together for like almost 11%. Because a lot of boss enemies are going to be humans, and they're going to be dropping a bunch of smithing tech, so that's really nice. And then yeah, damage bonus agility, I pretty much recommend that. As long as you're in like the B green range, I think damage bonus agility is probably the best one. And then for the weapon, 
one of the coolest things about the Odachi, I love the fact that you can get increased attack, moonlight snow. That's actually a nice buff. I do think that actually does increase your attack by quite a bit, so I really like that because it's my favorite move with the Odachi. I have high attack break. That's mainly for human enemies. If they're blocking you, you're going to break their guard a lot quicker. And let me tell you, the Odachi, especially in high stance, will break their guard extremely quickly. I have melee key damage. That's good against everything. I have melee attack key consumption minus 5.4%. That just allows me to attack more, so that's good. I have attack bonus, stamina A+. This armor is heavy. You're going to probably want to have 99 stamina, so why not have the attack bonus, stamina A+, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever stat you have, if you have 99 in that stat, you're going to get the same amount of damage from attack bonus A+. So it doesn't matter if you're talking about, oh, I'm on an Odachi. Let me make it strength. A plus because Odachi scales better with strength. No, it's not going to make a difference. If it's magic A plus and you have 99 magic, or if it's dexterity A plus and you have 99 dexterity, it will make no difference. The bonus is going to be exactly the same. I've tested it. You just have to trust me on that. You can test it yourself, but I have tested it. Now, the other thing I have on here is luck yokai shift. Now, you might be wondering, how do you put that on there? That comes from a soul core. Well, the way you do it, is you take a corrupted weapon, any corrupted weapon will do, and then you soul match the corrupted weapon with a soul core, and then you can inherit whatever is on the soul core onto the corrupted weapon. So if you actually can get item drop rate yokai shift or luck yokai shift, you could put that onto your weapon, your corrupted weapon, and then take the corrupted weapon and put that on any weapon. So that's how you do that, and that's one thing I highly recommend. Now, I cannot say for sure what's better, item drop rate or luck. I don't really know. I kind of think luck is better, but I will say item drop rate might be better. So it's something that one day maybe someone will test and be able to really tell everybody. But right now, I don't think it matters. As long as you have luck or item drop rate, yokai shift on your weapon, that will help because that's just added bonus. Now, there's one last thing I want to talk about before I'll talk about the Guardian Spirit and then the Soul Cores, because that's actually really important for this build and farming and all that. I want to talk about remodeling. Now, I do have 99 strength and 99 stamina on this build. I'm using an Odachi, so it just makes a lot of sense. But if you're using different weapons, you might not have 99 strength. Remember, this armor is really heavy, so if you're going to remodel the armor, I probably wouldn't recommend remodeling it for the increased weight. Now, if you don't know, whenever you're remodeling your armor, as you upgrade the armor, it's going to actually affect the remodel. So if you chose weight and let's say, you know, you're like, hey, I'm still in fine weight category. You know, I'm not in that yellow sea overweight category. If you upgrade the armor, it's going to get heavier and heavier and heavier. Same with if you chose the stat requirement one. So if you chose that one, the stat requirement is going to go up and up and up. So just know this. If you have forged the Child of the Sun's armor, if you actually remodel it and then increase the stat requirement, it will actually max out at 18 strength, 18 stamina. Now this build requires you to use 99 stamina and I believe 18 strength. So in a way, that's perfect. But if you did farm this armor from the boss itself, do not do that because the stat requirement is going to be like probably 30, 30 or something like that. Now, because I have 99 strength, so if you're able to also do that, I did increase the weight on the Kadamo Bowl and I increased the weight on one of the pieces of the Child of the Sun's armor and I'm still not overweight. But if you don't have the 99 strength, I would probably go for the stat requirement just to get the extra defense because why not? Now for the weapon, because I have 99 strength and 99 stamina, it does not matter which one I remodel it for. The damage will not change at all. Because if I remodel it for strength, I'm going to get an A. If I remodel it for stamina, I'm going to get an A-. minus. But the thing is, is that if I remodel it for strength, I'll get an A, but then my stamina will be a D or a C- minus or something like that. So it will all equal out. So it's completely equal. I've tried it before. It does not matter. 
if I have strength or stamina. The main thing here though, whatever weapon you're using, if you have 99 in that stat and you can remodel it for that stat, do so. Your damage will dramatically increase if you do that. Alrighty, so now let's talk about the Guardian Spirit and let's talk about the Soul Cores because that's really important. Because we're going to be stacking a crap ton of luck and a crap ton of item discovery. Now when it comes to the Guardian Spirit, this is so important. It is super important. But first things first, when you're talking about your primary Guardian Spirit, this is completely up to you on what you want to use. Now, of course, I'm going to recommend Tenji because I'm a big Tenji fan. I love it. I think it's the best one in the game. Sorry, it just is. Because of the stance-based Amarita bonus. And by the way, they all stack. You can get every bonus you want. They all have decent durations. And they will give you nice buffs. Especially the attack increase by being in high stance. It is a really, really nice buff. So I recommend Tenji, and when it comes to the Soul Cores, use whichever ones you want. The only one I normally use at this point is the Thunderstorm one, just to buff my weapon, because I can buff my weapon with lightning, and I have an unlimited weapon buff, basically. So that's what I like to use. What matters more is actually your secondary Guardian Spirit. And the thing is, we're not really using this as a secondary spirit. We're actually using this as another primary spirit because the strategy we're going to be using is we're going to be using Tenji to run through the level and we could even use Tenji to fight the boss. And once the boss is almost dead, we can then switch our guardian spirit mid-fight. That is an option in the game. At any point, you can switch to your secondary spirit and turn the secondary spirit into your primary spirit. And at that point, we would then pop our yokai shift and we have this spirit set up that it's going to have first of all luck yokai shift 70 and all of the soul cords i have equipped will give me item drop rate and luck while being in yokai shift so if i could kill the boss then i'm going to have an incredible amount of luck and an incredible amount of item drop rate and that is going to help me get smithing tax. It's going to help me get boss skill drops. It is incredible. Now the other spirit I would recommend if you have skill. Because my build, I don't have dex. I don't have skill. And that is the spider. It's always funny to say that. I have no skill, guys. But anyway, I would recommend the spider potentially. Because the spider gives you 40 luck all the time. You don't need to be in yokai shift for that. So that's good. Remember, luck will increase our attack too. So that's, you know, pretty good. It's kind of nice. And while you are using the spider as your primary spirit, you will have a 5% item drop rate if you meet the requirement. So that's really cool. And I don't know if 30 luck is the same as 5% item drop rate or if 30 luck is better. I just don't know. So maybe Nine Tails is better. Maybe the Spider is better. It's hard to say. Now let's talk about the Soul Course. This is gonna be a pain. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's a pain because I have so many Soul Cores. But let's take a look. So this is one of them I have equipped to my Nine Tails Fox, and it's got Luck and Item Drop Rate. So it's 35 Luck. It's nine percent item drop rate and remember the weapon also has that as well so we even get more luck because of the weapon now this is just a really good drop because this one came with both of those on there automatically but then again maybe one of them was an orange inheritable i can't really say but you can always inherit it on there so i'm going to give you an example with the next one is this it this is it so this one had movement speed yokai ship and luck yokai ship and all i did was i inherited it the item drop rate yokai shipped on here. These are soul cores that obviously you're going to have a bunch of these because as you're playing, you're going to be killing a lot of yokis and you're going to be killing a lot of these enkis. So there's a good chance you're going to get item drop rate yokai shift and luck yokai shift. And then you can always just inherit it on there. Now, the other one I have, I think that one's going to be more towards the bottom, is actually this one. Which, once again, this one had Luck Yokai Shift, and it had Defense on it. And all I did was I just inherited the item drop rate onto it. Now, whenever you're inheriting 
on the soil cores, you have to use either the same type of soil core to do so, or you can actually use the mortal soil cores. So if you can get lucky with those, those can come with inheritables on there, and you can inherit stuff to your soil cores. So there you go. That's what I did. This is what I recommend. Obviously, you might not have this available to you, but just stack as much luck yokai shift or however much item drop rate yokai shift you can. Like I said, the soul cores, they do not matter on your secondary spirit because remember, we have our primary spirit. This is our main one. We're using this for offense. And then once the boss is almost dead and we want to try to get that smithing text from the boss, we then switch to the spirit, then we pop our yokai shift, and we finish the boss off. Now, the final thing that I do want to talk about when it comes to farming and your luck and getting these smithing techs, something that's important is your clan. Now, I'm a big fan of Toto. Every single one of my videos so far, I've been talking about Toto, and Toto's great. And it is still great. It would work really good with this build because we have 99 stamina. Our armor is heavy. Toto would be awesome, but I cannot recommend Toto for this. I have to recommend Gamo. I hope I'm saying that right. But this clan gives you luck and damage bonus consecutive attacks. Now it starts off at 30 and a C, but what was really interesting was I haven't been in this clan before ever in Neo 2. And when I joined this clan, it actually did give me some of the bonus. It increased those base stats right away. Now, maybe this has something to do with the fact that this is a blue clan. Technically white, I guess, but it is blue. I'm sorry. I don't know why they say it's white. It's blue. I'm sorry, right? It's got to be blue. But maybe because both of these clans are blue clans, that's why like when I joined this one, it actually did give me a little bit of the bonus. So what I mean is, is that my luck currently from this clan is 42, and my damage bonus consecutive attacks is B-. minus. So if I was in this clan just a little bit longer, that would increase to being a damage bonus consecutive attacks A, and the luck, I would assume, would maybe be like 50 or 50-something, 50 which is super good, obviously. So this is the clan you want to be a part of if you're going to use this build to actually farm for stuff. And I have to recommend this one for that reason. And this is a very popular clan for that reason as well. That's why so many people are in this clan is because they're trying to get that luck. It just makes sense. Now, everything else I'm going to talk about here isn't as important. I guess my stats are important, but my skills and all that, that's not going to be nearly as important because, like I said, this build is universal. You could use whatever weapon you want. You don't have to use Odachi. But if you actually look at my stats, the important stat there is stamina, obviously, because we need that for our armor. And remember, I do believe you need 18 strength if you want to have that green B agility. So that's important as well. I would say on every build, it's a good idea to probably have 24 heart and 24 courage. Having that means that you're going to have a good amount of key, and you're also going to have a really good amount of key recovery speed. I think that that's fine. So let's say you want to use a weapon that scales with skill. Well, you can just put a ton of points into skill. Try to get that to 99 if you can. Obviously on max level, if you're not max level, then you can always adjust this. The stat I always say that you can lower, the first stat I would say you can definitely lower would be magic. You can take that down to 30. But the higher your magic, the longer your duration. But... I would recommend 6 Dexterity. That way you can equip Quick Chain Scrolls if you want. I actually have Power Pills on right now. So I normally do recommend at least 6 Dexterity. But like I said, you can always switch your stats around depending on your weapon. So if you're using like a sword, katana really, whatever you want to say, you can go for 99 Heart if you want. If you're using dual swords or hatchets or something, you can go for 99 Skill. Now, this is an interesting little fact. The Tonfas are the only weapon in the game that doesn't actually scale with skill or strength. Every other weapon will. So, like, what you could do is have 99 strength, and if you want to play with a bunch of different weapons, maybe you want to max out the proficiency of, like, a bunch of different weapons. Well, you can do that while playing with this build. It's totally fine. 
And also, there's a bunch of titles for getting like 500 human kills with every weapon. Which I feel like that title is really dumb because it's human kills. It should have just been kills with that weapon. But, if you went like 99 strength, you have a lot of weapons you could use with strength. And then of course, just remodel those weapons to primarily scale with strength. Same with skill. You could level up your skill to 99, and then there's a ton of weapons you can use that will scale with skill, and then remodel the weapon to primarily scale with skill. And your damage will be actually pretty good. Now, let's actually talk about magic power. Because magic power, mine is currently 618. I still believe 600 magic power is kind of like the magic number. If you really want to affect your durations and have them be pretty decent, and also be able to apply the sloth talisman, the weakness talisman, while playing co-op. Because if you're playing co-op, a lot of times, if you have a lower magic power, it's going to require you to use two sloths or two weaknesses on a boss to apply it. And that's just annoying. Now, by the way, an extremely important stat is my luck. It's at 218, which is a crap ton. Now, that number is much higher than it actually appears right now. Because what we're not taking into account is all of the bonus luck that I get while being in Yokai Shift. Plus all the bonus luck that I get for being in the Dark Realm and all those extra stats. One thing I forgot to mention, which I guess I technically haven't forgot about it. I haven't talked about skills yet. But in the Shiftling Tree, there are a lot of different things you can grab there that could help. Now if I actually do the math on it, including my weapon, of all the bonus luck while being in Yokai Shift, it's pretty insane. So it's 35 and 35, that is 70. 35 more, that is 105, and then 35, so it's 140. Plus, Nine Tails gives me 70, that's 210. Add that to my luck currently, and you're talking about 428 luck. If I can kill the boss while being in Yokai Shift. That is insane. Plus, with the 10% item drop rate that I get from the Shifling Tree, and then I have 30% item drop rate from all my Soul Cores, while being in Yokai Shift, obviously, that's a 40% item drop rate. Plus all the other bonuses from all the other item drop rates that I have. So, that is insane. It is absolutely ridiculous. Now, let's talk about the skills. There's really not a lot to talk about with Odachi, I'm going to be honest. Because this build, you can use whatever weapon you want. But I guess I should actually show this in the Shiftling Tree. I brought it up. I said I wasn't going to show it, but screw it. Why not? So there are some of these skills I recommend. Like, for example, increase the drop rate of items by 10% while you're in your Yokai Shift. This is amazing, you know, obviously. So grab this for sure. There's also another one, which is 3% drop rate for items while in Dark Realm. Remember, some of the bosses, especially the Yokai ones, will go into Dark Realm. If you kill them while they're in the Dark Realm, I'm pretty sure this will apply and you will have a higher chance of getting drops that way. And then same with this, 10 luck while in Dark Realm, same concept. Very good. Grab all of the skills that will mess with your drop rate and your luck. especially the item drop rate one with the yokai shift that's like by far the one you definitely want to get now when it comes to odachi you can go for whatever skill or whatever passive you want to go for by all means do it i went for a crap ton into melee mastery i put nine points into this i think okay maybe i put eight i don't know how many i put in here but if you want to grab more skills or if you want to grab more passives Go right ahead. It's completely up to you if you like Odachi. I kind of like the melee mastery. I want the extra damage because the way I play Odachi is pretty simple. I do like mid stance and I do like sunset breeze heaven. I like to use this to go into high stance. And the reason why I like this one is because I like to do the power attack and then I transition into high stance and then I can follow it up with twin moons. That combo of mid stance power attacks into high stance into twin moons is so powerful that like any enemy should die from that. It's very, very good. But in terms of any other kind of crazy combo, 
I don't bother. I don't bother with the other stuff, like swapping back to mid stance. I'll just keep holes back into mid stance if I'm going to do that. Now, obviously, I really like Moonlight Snow. It's the main move I'm using on Odachi. It's really, really powerful, especially because I have all these buffs for it. But yeah, it's a very, very good move. So I'm using this a lot. And then when it comes to like a lot of these passives, you know, I went for a bunch of them. Damage against humans. That's actually really good. It's 12%. So definitely grab that. Same with this one, which is going to give you more damage if you're at full health. This is 12% as well. I did skip grapple damage. And I skipped final blow damage just because I didn't really see the point. Same with the maximum key. I skipped this because I didn't really see the point, honestly. But I did grab the backstab damage because I am trying to do that with this build. I will slough, I will weaken, I will run behind the enemy, or the boss, really. And then I will use my Moonlight Snow and dominate. So that is something. And this is another move I do use from time to time. Not all the time. But if I'm doing like a combo or something, because there's a lot of combos you can do with Odachi, you can always finish the combo with this move, and that's really, really cool. Now, let's go ahead and quickly talk about skill customization with Odachi. I do actually have both of the boss skills. Obviously, I have them because I farmed for them. But Dragonhorn is interesting. I do like this move a lot. It's pretty awesome. And when it comes to the Grandmaster skill, this is the one I'm using. This one, I do prefer this one just because it increases the key damage when an enemy is attacking you. That's basically what it does. And that's actually pretty good, so I do like it. Now, one of my main moves is Twin Moon. So because of that, I have Raging Strike on this. Now, Raging Strike is going to do a crap ton of damage to yourself. And this will damage me quite a bit. But it's not nearly as much as if I put it on Moonlight Snow. If I did that, it takes me down to one health so quick. So, normally, I don't actually take too much damage from this. And with all of the life recovery and the Amarita absorption stuff, which I talked about in my last video, I normally am okay. But this does hurt me, so that is something. And on this, I have increased the damage by strength. On Moonlight Snow, I went for the stamina bonus, just because, honestly, I think that's fine. It's 5%, remember that. If you have 99 in that stat, you're only going to get a 5% bonus, but still, 5% is better than nothing. And everything else has downsides, like Raging Strike. If I use Raging Strike on Moonlight Snow, it's going to pretty much take me down to one health, so that's not something I want. And also, this is another one of the boss skills that you can get, which is Swirling Snow. This is, in my opinion, one of the best boss skills in the game. It might be the best. It is super, super good. It's really quick. That's the thing that's kind of crazy about it. It's really fast. And the DPS on it is kind of nuts because it does hit hard, too. It doesn't, like, hit really weak or anything like that. It hits hard, and it's really fast. So I really like this move a lot. And if you're going to use this move, I would say that the Reckless Slice is actually really good. You get 10% damage, and in exchange, you cannot keep pulse, but you don't really need to keep pulse with this move. It's not really a big deal. So that's my skill customization. There's only one more thing I could think of that I haven't talked about, which is my buffs and my magic. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you probably know what I'm going to recommend. But one thing I have been doing a little differently is I'm not using quick change scroll anymore. I would recommend this still. I do really love it. It's just that like I'm never dying anymore, so I never really benefit from it. And instead, I've been using power pills just to give me a little bit more attack. So it's nice. Now, when it comes to my magic, I am using two purification talismans. Now, the thing is, I still love this. And I would 100% recommend it most of the time because it will apply really quickly against humans, against yokai. And if you are playing co-op and someone else is using another element, if they apply that element, then you're going to get confusion. And if you are using something to apply another element, in my case, I'm using a soul core to apply lightning to my weapon. So what I'll do is I'll use purification and apply this effect really quickly. 
go into my soul core, buff my weapon with lightning, apply that, and now I get the confusion effect. If you do that, especially against bosses, the bosses are going to die so fast. So I really like purification mainly because it applies universally so good so fast. But I will actually switch to water talisman for now because why not? You can use whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. I have Luckbringer Talisman on. This is obviously really important. It has a high cost to it. That's kind of the problem. So you only need one. But I normally will just use it from my menu. I don't even have it equipped. Because all you got to do is just pull up your menu and then use it and that's it. And it's going to have a really good duration. Especially if you have a lot of magic power. Same with Extraction. This has an amazing duration. I love it for that. I have two of these on. But the main thing about this is that when you attack an enemy, you're going to get Amarita. That means that my 10G buffs are going to apply. And all that life recovery from Amarita absorption I have is also going to apply. So that's really, really awesome. I highly recommend Extraction Talisman. Next up, I have Rejuvenation and Barrier. Barrier, I personally think is like the best buff in the game. So 100% use this. And then Rejuvenation, I also really like this as well because you're constantly getting health back. And I use four of both of these. You could technically use five if you want because you have some options here. I know a lot of people don't like weakness or sloth. That's fine. If you don't want to use them, don't use them. But when I was thinking about what to put on for this build, I really couldn't figure it out. And I said, screw it. I'll just put weakness and sloth on. One reason to have really high magic power is because you can apply sloth and weakness in one talisman in co-op. That's really cool. Plus, when you go from New Game to New Game Plus, let's say you have 30 magic and your magic power is probably pretty low. When you go from New Game to New Game Plus and then you apply Sloth to like a boss, man, the duration is so, so bad. It really is. I remember that. I took it off because I was like, that is really bad. But when you have a higher magic power, the duration is going to be a lot better on both of these. So that's another reason why I really like having a higher magic power. Alrighty, well I think that's everything. I've covered everything I could think of. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to get the most obscured smithing tax in the entire game. I actually want to show this just because it's confusing. Even if you follow the guide that I have in the description... It could still be confusing because I got confused. I couldn't find the grave. And because I couldn't find the grave, because this is a remnant grave, by the way, we're looking for. Because I couldn't find the grave, I thought I messed it up. So it took me a while to figure this out. So I'm going to show you guys how to exactly get this smithing text because it's so obscure and like hidden. But this is region four. This is the dawn region. And there is a mission. Its main mission is the frenzied blaze. So we need to do this mission, and something is hidden in this mission, and if we do that, that's going to unlock a Revenant Grave in this mission, the submission, the Warrior. And then we can farm that grave to get a smithing tax, and yeah, that's kind of crazy. It's really, really kind of hidden. Now there's only one other Revenant that you have to summon and get a smithing tax from. I'm going to show you that too, just because why not? But this one is a little bit more direct because all you have to do is summon them and fight them and it's in the middle of a mission. So it's not like hidden or anything like that to make it appear. And that's this mission, the Fallen Star. And all this mission is, is really just a boss battle. And the boss itself can drop like multiple smithing techs. So there is a remnant. There's actually a lot of NPC remnants, but there's one that can drop a helmet smithing tax. If you use the guide, you will see which grave it is you have to summon. But I wanted to point that out because I'm pretty sure those are the only two revenants that you have to summon to get smithing tax. Because there are revenants that you fight and they drop it. I guess technically they're revenants, but guess what? You don't have to summon them. They're just a part of a mission or something like that. Alrighty, so I'm going to start this up and I will show you exactly what you need to do to get this really hidden smithing tax. Alrighty, well, to be honest with you, I'm going to run through this level to show you what you need to know. 
But also, while I'm running through the level, I can kind of show off the build a little bit more. So I'm kind of killing two birds, one stone here. So that's always kind of nice. So let me quickly buff up. The last thing always is to use my luck bringer from my menu. And now let's go and run through the level. Now, the main thing we're trying to do here is to get to the second shrine. We just ran past the first one, so that's where I'm trying to get to. Unfortunately, this level is a little confusing at times. It's so nice that that move actually allows me to buff my attack. I love that. Now, as you can see, I do like to spam that, but I also like to do this little combo, which against this guy, this is going to be quick. But this is the whole mid-stance combo I was talking about. Let me show you. Basically, it's two strong attacks into the light attack, into twin moon. And then you can even do that to finish it off. So that's really cool. And it's a very powerful combo if you actually pull that off. So, And yeah, I love this move too. Like, it's just so fast. And it can dominate, especially against these enemies that are lower to the ground. Any smaller guy... This will just destroy. I really think that it's kind of cheap just because there's a good chance that you literally could get away with just using that one move and you would probably be okay. Just like I can just use this move and be okay as well because that move is so powerful. Okay, let's go ahead and take this guy out real quick. And we're almost to the second shrine once we get past this little bit we will be actually at the second shrine. So let's do this. I really do like mid-stance a lot on Odachi. And I didn't want to do that against this guy, but whatever. What's nice about Moonlight Snow, by the way, is even when, like, you're surrounded by enemies, a lot of times you'll hit, like, multiple enemies with Moonlight Snow. And by the way, I just want to say, I know it's moonlit. I know people are going to probably comment and say, It's not moonlight, it's moonlit! It's like, okay guys, yeah, I know. I know. But I just say moonlight because it's moonlight to me. I'm sorry. Same thing, basically. Alright, so we're almost there. Let me just make my way over to this spot. But I want to point this out. Do not grab this item. There is a very good chance that everybody did, but you have to grab it at the right time. Now, you know you're in the right spot because, first of all, there's this, like, house. And in there, in that yokai realm, is one of those blue wheel monks. And then over here, you have this guy. So this is how you know you're in the right spot. But that item right there, that is the item that you do not want to grab. You want to wait. Because now what we need to do is actually go and recruit the Obsidian Knight. And then we could take him with us over there to pick up the item. That's how you're going to get the Revenant to spawn in the Warrior mission. So let's go and do that. We need to talk to him real quick. And by the way, make sure he is actually with you because unfortunately he can be a dummy. And he'll start fighting enemies or whatever. So I'm going to actually take out all these enemies so that he's not going to get stuck. I've had that happen before where he literally was not following me. Because he was like getting stuck on a wall or something. I have no idea. But if you come over this way. We can come through here. And then right here. This is a shortcut back to the shrine. So let's take her out real quick. And yes. This is going to take us back to the shrine. I am going to pick up that divine real quick. Thank you. And I think from here. We just have to go forward. And then we have to make our way back to that item. And let's make sure he is with us. See? Look at him. Come on, man. Hurry up. Make sure he's next to you when you pick this up. And then once you do, he is going to actually say something. And that's the key. He's going to say, that helmet. Once he has said that, then you should be good. The grave should spawn in the warrior mission. So now, I am going to use a branch. And I am going to load up that mission. I'll show you exactly where to find the grave. Alrighty, well, we're in the mission now. And first things first, we need to get our yokai shift. Now, normally, what I would say, if this was like a normal mission where you're trying to farm a smithing text from a boss or something, 
once you get to the shrine, like right before the boss, that's when you should definitely try to make sure you have your yokai shift ready. And then you want to also save it at the shrine. Anytime you use the shrine, it's going to save it. And at any point, you can actually switch your guardian spirit. Now, you're going to have to wait like five seconds or whatever before you can actually pop your yokai shift. But in the middle of the boss battle, you could be using something good like Tenji. And then you're like, all right, time to finish off the boss. Switch to this, wait the five seconds, and then go ahead and use your yokai shift. Now, in this case, I'm just going to have the nine tails on because I don't really need to worry about that. And to be honest with you, I should actually open the gate before I save it. That way, everything is cleared out. And this goes the same, like, if there's, like, any type of dark realms or anything that you just don't want to constantly run through, you might want to clear those out, come back to the shrine, save it. And then what's going to happen is we're going to kill this revenant. And if it was a boss, it'd be the same concept. And let's say it didn't drop the smithing text. What we could do is just go ahead and exit to the main menu, come back in, and nothing will save. So we'll spawn right back at the shrine, and we can try again. So let's actually run over to where this grave is. I want to show this because this smithing text was really annoying to me just because it actually took me a minute to find the grave. And because I couldn't find the grave... I actually thought I was doing it wrong, so I went back to the other mission, I did it multiple times, so that's why I wanted to show this, just to kind of make a little mini guide on how to get this really obscured smithing text, but now I'm going to buff up completely. I do need to be careful, to be honest, because this revenant's probably going to be really weak, and I do want to actually pop my yokai shift while I'm here, so the revenant's grave is over here, and you've seen the path I took. You know you're going the right way when you're running past the humans and everything. Alright, so honestly, I could just probably pop this and take him out. And he's not going to drop the text, obviously, because I already have it. But there you go. Pick up the loot. And if I didn't get the thing I was looking for, I can always just go ahead and exit. Load it back up. I'm going to spawn right back at the shrine and try again. And that's the thing. It works like a charm. And this build is very powerful. It absolutely does dominate. And it's universal. That's one of the things I really like about it. So you can use it with any weapon you want. But it's definitely going to help you farm for the boss skills, the smithing tax. If you want more loot, like divine drops, you'll get more of them. I really like this build a lot. And I would definitely recommend trying this out for an in-game build. Because it is awesome. Alrighty guys, well that's going to do it for this video. I really hope that you have enjoyed it and that this has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? It really does help me out. And be sure to subscribe if you're interested, especially in Neo 2. I'm going to be trying to come out with more build videos in the future. And make sure to click the bell. That's actually the most important thing now. So if you want to stay notified and know when new videos come out, be sure to click the bell. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day, and peace out.